I'm in Washington, D.C. because I want to understand the origins of a conspiracy theory that has become the justification for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But long before it was the official line of the Kremlin, it started with a single tweet from an American, a QAnon follower who goes by war clandestine, basically saying that the reason Russia went into Ukraine was to destroy U.S.-funded biological laboratories, laboratories that he says are developing bioweapons that are going to be used against Russian citizens. We've been doing this shit for decades, and now they want to say that it's a conspiracy theory. Tell me how that makes sense. Did Putin bomb the U.S. bio labs in Ukraine? That's all I want to know. In the days after this threat goes out, Twitter suspends War Clandestine, and people start sharing screenshots of his original tweets, saying that he's being silenced. And people really take to it. The Biolabs hashtag trends on Twitter, but gets millions of views on TikTok. People start making their own videos, adding more information, adding their own kind of flair to this conspiracy theory. If you believe those US-funded Biolabs in Ukraine aren't making biological weapons, please sit all the way down. And this Twitter thread got shared thousands of times. It ultimately ended up on Infowars, and it went as far as Fox News, the Congress, and of course, to the Russian government itself. Structure. Former President Dmitry Medvedev does an interview where he says he's extremely concerned about these bioweapons labs. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov does a press conference where he says part of the invasion is about securing or destroying these labs. There's increasing concerns that Putin could use this conspiracy theory as a pretext to launch a biological weapons attack in Ukraine. Lane to take the I-95 North ramp. So I'm here in D.C. to see Dr. Robert Pope, who is a senior official at the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, and according to a whole bunch of these conspiracy theorists, and increasingly the Russian government, part of the reason for Moscow's invasion is to destroy all the labs that Dr. Pope is responsible for. So I am curious to get his perspective on this whole thing and to get a little bit more detail about what these labs actually do. Cooperative Threat Reduction Program is been in the news a fair bit recently, it suffice has. it to say. Um, maybe you can just describe to me specifically what, what that is and, and you know, the biological threat that you, yeah. that you folks work on. Sure. Yeah, our, our program dates back a, a little over 30 years now, watching the uh, fall of the Soviet Union with some alarm, and we're concerned about what was going to happen to the Soviet WMD arsenal. So when it comes to the biological weapons, I mean, <laughs> did, did you get rid of them? <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, we got rid of what we could cooperatively get rid of. I mean, the U.S. still assesses that Russia has an active biological weapons program, so I'd say we didn't get it all. When it comes to Georgia, Ukraine, Poland, mm -hmm. Kazakhstan, you know, are, are you know, the remnants of that biological weapons program, is it gone? There's no evidence that the U.S. is aware of that any of those countries have a biological weapons program. In early March, a senior State Department official, Victoria Newland, goes before a Senate committee and says, well, this. Does Ukraine have chemical or biological weapons? Uh, Ukraine has uh, biological research facilities. If there's a biological or chemical weapon incident or, uh, or attack inside of Ukraine, is there any doubt in your mind that 100% it would be the Russians that would be behind it? There is no doubt in my mind, Senator, and it is classic Russian uh, technique to blame on the other guy what they're planning to do themselves. She is very, very clear that she's concerned about biological research facilities being hit by airstrikes. She says nothing about bioweapons. But nevertheless, this becomes proof positive for a ton of people that the conspiracy theories like War Clandestine was touting were right all along. And suddenly it goes way bigger than just one guy who is really fond of the QAnon conspiracy theory. Suddenly it's on one of America's most watched news programs, Tucker Carlson. What exactly are they doing in these secret Ukrainian bio labs? So I'm hustling back to my hotel right now because I have an interview booked with Ulana Suprun and Marco Suprun, who are two old contacts of mine, who are still based in Kiev. It's just morning there, their curfew has just ended. Marco runs an anti-disinformation agency called Stop Fake. And Ulana is the former minister of health for Ukraine. She helped sign the agreements that enabled you know, American partnerships in some of these labs. The Russian foreign ministry suggested that Ulana's grandfather is a Nazi. And it's been implied that that's why they want to develop these bioweapons. We've even seen Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky address this biolabs conspiracy theory and call it out. 
Слушайте, не, не, нечего объяснить. Ну, нет у нас. Ну, мы с удовольствием. Can you, can you give me as much as you can kind of a history of, 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 of this whole idea that Ukraine is home to some, you know, internationally infamous bioweapons program that, you know, only the Russians seem to know about? No uh, weaponization of anything was being done. It was just a program to sort of help clean up the biosecurity and biosafety system in Ukraine. Putin has put forward the idea that uh, Ukraine is developing bioweapons with con you know, conjunction with the U.S., uh, for quite some time. Do you have a sense of what the sort of utility of this, of this, you know, bit of disinformation was? We were traveling back from Lviv. Someone sends me the tweet from Maria Zakharova. I guess she's the press person for the, for ministry. the foreign, foreign minister. Ministry, yeah. It's a picture of Ulana with a weird, like, linkage thing to me, to her father, and to this historical figure that Ulana hails from a family of Nazis because Ivan Yurkyu is in a SS uniform, that this is her grandfather. But it's not true. It's not That's true. not my grandfather. It's not her grandfather. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh my God, these guys are going to find us and we're, I'm going to be hung on the streets well, as a Nazi. For right? me, what was, what was striking was how they put the story together. It's how disinformation works, right? Tiny grains of truth and then they mash them together and put a conclusion that's absolutely not true. So yes, I was the Minister of Health and yes, I was in a program uh, we were trying to get biosafety and biosecurity laboratory, um, uh, a laboratory policy in place, right? So that's true. And then they hook up this fake Nazi that is supposedly my grandfather. So in the end, it's this American came to Ukraine to build bio laboratories with Nazis to kill Ukrainians. And that's why we have to come in and save the Ukrainians from her and these bio labs. All of a sudden, it's Hunter Biden now involved. If any Republican, you know, needs a reason to abandon the congressional unity on the issue of uh, supplying Ukraine with weapons, Hunter Biden is going to do a very good job. Apparently, a private equity firm run by Hunter Biden funded some of the research into pathogens in these bio labs. It's going to empower someone like Tucker Carlson to start working on the rifts within the two within Congress. This information is a targeted politics of attrition. So in about two short weeks, this conspiracy theory goes from one QAnon believer's Twitter account to the official justification of the Russian government and ultimately to the halls of power. You see Marjorie Taylor Greene, a very conservative member of the Republican Party, stand up in the House of Representatives and say that, yeah, we should be concerned. And the U.S. government should not be funding something that is killing people in a country that's not even our own. I have introduced a bill to stop taxpayer funding for bioweapons. Why do you think people believe this? You know, why do you think they believe that these labs could be something nefarious and, and yeah. dangerous and, and you know, targeted specifically at them? I think that in those that believe some of it is because uh, they don't have access to other information. I think it, it activates fear response in some folks. It activates uh, people that already distrust governments, that distrust authority, and, and are looking for an, an easy answer that sounds like something nefarious is happening. These aren't U.S. laboratories. They're Ukraine's public health and animal health laboratories. It's you know all transparently published uh, disease surveillance research, and they're going to learn nothing from the laboratory that they don't already know but they might endanger the community based on their violent actions.